Mosin Rifle Crate. This is the typical 20 rifle crate that the communists packed their refurbished Mosin rifles in after World War II. This is what companies like AIM or Classic and others like them get their large shipments of rifles in. Just a big old box. And on top you can see the typical contents of that box. Two examples. One is a 1930. This is just random samples. They could be anything. This is a 1930 EGESC round receiver. You, know, you can tell this has been featured in a video before. And a 1930 Tula. Forget whether I ever featured this one or not. Hex receiver. Both of these are refurbished Soviet rifles. That means after World War II, they took all their shit that they used to fight the Nazis. They stripped it down to its component parts. They refurbished everything by the tens of thousands, actually millions. And they put them all back together again with really no regard to how the parts went or, well, what arsenal was what. You could get a, a Tula rifle a receiver here with EGESC parts, a new stock. This is a post-war stock. Uh, same thing for the uh, these Jesk rifles, they make a difference. Sometimes you'll see like this one, this has electro penciled numbers, this one has stamped numbers, don't make a difference. The crates can have anything in them. You never know what you're gonna find in one of these and you rarely will ever get a chance to see that because when AIM or Classic gets one of these in, they have to go through them and put each and every one of these rifles in their bound book, their dealer book. So that means if they find a DDR in there, or an MO marked rifle, or something else special, it's coming out of there. Unless they decide to leave one in there just to string you along, if you buy a whole crate, they might throw something special in there for you. But, and of course, there's going to be a mix in these crates of round receiver and hex receivers. More round than hex, only because you know the rounds were made during the war, when production levels were at their absolute highest. So you're mostly going to find round receivers in these. Now this particular crate, I bought this from a local gun shop, empty, and I filled it with my own rifles. I didn't want a random crate of a bunch of just anything rifles. I picked them and chose them. There's everything in here. There's Spanish Civil War in here. There's Finn in here. There's uh, Balkan used rifles. You name it, 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 it's in here. These two though on top are just representative of what you would get if you ordered a 20 round crate. The few that are still available, I think uh, maybe Classic still has them like that, but somebody online was selling them. You know, two, three grand, you get a whole 20, 20 rifle crate uh, of Mosin rifles like this. All right, let's take these off of here. Have a look at what's hidden inside. The crate. Okay. The crates are secured. Got these two clasps. Like that. Get my fingers under the damn lid. Maybe I can lift it. There we go. Okay. The contents of the crate. Each crate comes with, like I said, 20 refurbished Mosin M9130 rifles. The 9130 crates, as this one is. There will be 20, in an ideal world, matched bayonets in there. Now, the commies did match the bayonets to the rifles. You'll see on these things. Where, where is the... Ah, oh, there we go. See the number on there? That would correspond to a rifle. They were fitted at the arsenal and each crate had 20 matching bayonets in it. But a lot of times the dealers were lazy and they didn't match the bayonets to the rifles. They just threw one in a box, you got whatever. So that's what would be in a 20 bayonets. There will be the slings, not ammo of course, not range buddy. Uh, these, these tools here are the LB uh, sight tools. For the LB sight to adjust the front sight on the most scene, right? This one's for the 9130, that one's M44. You'd have 20 of these. This is the cleaning kits with all the little parts inside them. And there will be 20 of those. Those are the uh, ammunition pouches, but uh, not with ammunition, of course. That's just, just something I have in the crate. Now, we used to see the crates with this. This is desiccant paper. The communists' uh, idea, instead of using cosmoline, let's use desiccant paper to keep the moisture at bay. It would have been completely sealed over the top to keep the rifles safe, and the rifles weren't covered with shit. Today, you get a rifle, it's covered with grease. So I guess at some point, either they or the dealers changed how they did things. I really don't know. But here's what's in the, K, in the crate. You can see that one right there is a refurb. 1925 Ijesk. 
and over here uh, that is a 1930s Jesk and I believe whoops I just knocked shit over that's nice there we go. That, that is actually an X Dragoon. So that's good. That's an X Dragoon 9130. 9130s didn't become 9130s immediately. It took a while to use up all those old sights. So what they did was they just kept making the Dragoon rifle until about 1933. So a lot of these started off life as Dragoon rifles. And they were later upgraded to 9130 despite being marked 1930, 31, 32, or whatever. Now let's see. This one right here. That one is a Spanish Civil War rifle. 1936 Ijesk. Here we have a common 1943 wartime with, of course, the wartime receiver. And it is in a laminated stock. As is this one over here, which is a 1936. This is a 1936 Tula round receiver. 1936 was a split year. They had hex and round in the same year. Only for Tula. Over here, we have a 1927 Ajesk. That is a Balkan rifle. That was used by the armies of Romania after World War II and uh, sold over here. And over here, of course, the one on the end, we have a Finn. That is a 1944 Finnish built 9130 rifle, unissued, brand new. Fits in the crate, so there it is. Now, there's rifles, of course, underneath there, too. You can see a little bit of them. I'm not going to pull off the top layer because they're pretty much the same type of mix of 1930s, late 20s, a few 40s. There's uh, DDR rifles in there. There's all kinds of good shit hidden down there. You can see the slings and stuff I stuffed down there. You can see the dividers that separate the stacks of rifles. It's an ideal way to store your collection if you have a lot of 9130 rifles. I actually have enough 9130s to fill two of these crates, possibly even work on a third. I was collecting them by year. Don't collect these rifles by year unless you want to end up with something like this. Of course, today this would be very expensive. When I was doing them, they were like 60 bucks each. They weren't that bad. But now you'll pay quite a bit of money for them. Here's a 1939 right there. The Jesk. And that's also a laminated stock. See, I showed you that one. I showed you the Balkan rifle. 43, the Spanish Civil War. I thought I had a DDR on top, but I guess that one is hidden underneath. 1930. There's a 1940 right there. That's a 1940 Ajesk. See the dog collar slings on the bottom there again. Why the communists stored all this shit away? Well, there's various stories, but the one that's most plausible is two, actually. They either wanted to use them to arm communist insurgents in other countries around the world. You know, all that help the brother communist crap. And, uh, and a lot of these did end up in places like North Korea, Vietnam, South America. You know, if you anywhere where you said, hey, I'm a commie, they gave you weapons. First, they were these. Later on, they were AK-47s. SKS's, things like that. The other theory being was that uh, at some point they were terrified the West was going to invade like the Germans did. And of course, let's face it, we did think about it a few times. But by mid-1950s, the era of the ICBMs and nuclear H-bombs and all that shit, this was a pipe dream. You know, Nobody was going to be invading the USSR because they would nuke them into the freaking Stone Age. But they still kept making these things kept refurbishing these rifles right up into the 1970s. Just an endless, endless project that just kept on going and going. Had its own momentum after a while. They were going to use these rifles to arm the Soviet people into some kind of a Volkssturm-style militia and throw them in American tanks and infantry. 
with these rifles against M1 Garands and later on, of course, M14s and M16s to kind of slow them down a little bit so they can regroup for the North like they did with the Germans. You know, so we'll sacrifice a few hundred thousand men here or a million men here so that we could save the two million over there and, and hopefully stop the enemy. Just bullshit. But fortunately for us, they did this because now we get to play with their toys. They stored all these crates... I'm sure they stored many of them within Russia itself, but this, these ones that we have in the U.S. were stored in the Ukraine. In, a, I'm told, a large salt mine or a mine of some sort, anyway. Thousands and thousands and thousands of these damn crates full of rifles. Uh, so many that the, we've been buying them in this country for how long now? Since, since the mid-1990s? Not long after the fall of, of Soviet communism? Starting off, I think that the prices in these were like started about thirty or forty dollars, and now they're up to almost two hundred. And now, of course, Malat is uh, bringing them out of Russia itself. But the Ukraine horde was huge; it was gigantic, and it's still coming out of there, slower than it was, but it's still coming out. And uh, we had an opportunity for a while there to amass large collections of these things for not a whole lot of money, and it was a lot of fun. I had a great deal of fun. I mean, I amassed a collection of M44s, M38s. M9130s, as you can clearly see. A shitload of M91s, all kinds of finished rifles. I didn't have to break the bank to do it. If you're doing that today, I feel sorry for you guys, because you know what? You're going to have to pay a little bit more. That's just how it goes with mill serfs. You start off cheap, and you get real expensive when they get real popular. But this is what the crate looked like. This is what, uh, well, it didn't exactly look like this when you got it and opened it up for the first time. The only people that ever get to do that are the importers. Because each and every one of these damn rifles has to be taken out of these, these crates. Let me see if I can find an example of an import mark. I'm sure there's one in here somewhere. These are mostly earlier. Okay, this one. There you go. That's got the banner import mark on it. Right there, you can see it. They had to do that to all of these rifles. That's federal law in the United States. You have to put these damn import marks on them. Some of them are much more intrusive. This is an earlier one, and it's kind of small. Some of them they didn't put any on, all they did was they put a, a serial number on the receiver like, like that one. You know, the cat hair on there, that's nice. But uh, others are huge banner receivers that everybody loves to hate. That's federal law, can't get away from it. But I had to do it to all 20 rifles in the crate. So there were no secrets. All this bullshit you see about buy a crate, unsorted, un yeah, bullshit. They took them all out. They had to do each and every one had to be recorded, serial numbers, everything in their bound books, and they all had to be import marked. So absolutely 100% positively, the crates have all been searched. There's no such thing as an unsearched crate in the United States unless it just came off the boat and is in the hands of the importer. So if you're going to buy a crate, buy it with the understanding you're buying a sorted crate no matter what you read in the advertising. It's been poked through. They left anything in theirs because they wanted to, or they got really, really stupid and careless. Early on, that was probably true because they didn't know a lot about what was in these crates. They didn't understand, you know, what an SA stamp meant. They didn't understand what a DDR stamp looked like, what MO, the MO stamps were somehow special, although they probably aren't. We don't even know what the hell they mean. So, uh, you know, the, you, an early crate, you might have got something a little special, but these later ones, you're not. I can tell by the little sales these importers are having now, or these retailers like AIM, for instance, they have ammo rifle sales or DDR rifle sales. They've been picking them out of the crates. So don't, you know, just buy one with the understanding you're getting one with regular rifles in it and be happy with that. But back then, you might have had a shot. But it was only the importers that saw them fresh. Because if I opened this thing fresh, say I was an importer, all I would have seen was paper covering the top of it completely. This, this same paper right here, this is some of it right here, this desiccant paper. And I would have to rip that open and take each rifle out, remove the dividers. All of this crap would have been on the bottom, not on the top. It's only on the top for display. And, well, most of it is still on the bottom. And all the tool pieces would have been packed separately. You know, the, the muzzle protectors, the, the, uh, the little, the little um, screwdrivers. E20 to a little paper wrap package, wouldn't even have seen them. They've all been packed in little packages. Only thing you would have seen would have been the uh, ammunition pouches. That's it. Stuff that would not rust. And you would have had to sort all that out, which is what they did. The importers pulled the rifles out of these crates. They boxed them up individually because most people, unlike a few insane individuals such as myself, most people only bought one or two. 
So they put it in a box, threw the tools in there, grabbed any old bayonet, stuck that in there, and that's what they sent you. But if you bought a whole crate, you would get it all, and uh, but it would be a sorted crate, of course. You can see it's just plain pine, spruce probably, there's nothing special here. No magic wood in the crate, all it was done was just to hold the rifles. They probably didn't expect they would be holding them for 60, 70 years, but they did. The war they expected to happen, thank God, never happened. So now, here in the U.S. and Australia, Great Britain, and other places, uh, we get to collect all these rifles and, and play with them. I fired most of these. In fact, I probably fired all of these at one time or another. And, you know, they're all basically the same. There's no huge... Yes, yeah, some of them. That 1927 over there, that's a surprising rifle. That one is well used on the outside, Balkan rifle, you wouldn't think it would be all that accurate. But in fact, it's a 2-3 to three MOA rifle at 100 yards with communist ammunition. Just how it is. It's a very, very good rifle. That fin, of course, I don't have to tell anybody that collects fins about the accuracy, potential of a, of a Finnish built rifle. The other one's usually around 3-4 to four MOA. The Soviets had, you know, a minute of man rule. If it, if it would shoot minute of man, that's cool, that's good, we don't care, it's good enough. A minute of man at 200 yards. Most of us don't like to waste ammo. We like to have it a little bit better, you know, <laughs> so. But these average two to three to four MOA, anywhere in there is possible. Very rarely have I ever found one that shot worse than that. Only a very small handful. And they were mostly shot out Balkan rifles with with crown issues, things like that. And of course, I've gone over what a refurb 9130 is in the other videos. You all, if you've watched the other videos, you know the red shellac. You know you, that's well. You can see, you can actually. This is a good time to point out how widely the colors can range in that damn Soviet shellac. Here, you got one that's almost yellow. But you see how some darker ones. That one right there is almost black. Light one here again. Light one here again. And whereas there was another one in here. I don't know if you can even see it down there, but that one down there is almost blonde. Probably not showing up well in the camera, but there's a wide color range on these things. On the, and you know, they all have the typical polished bolts and their matched numbers, except for the Spanish Civil War rifle. Well, actually that one's matched too. And the Balkan rifle, they're matched, but they're not polished up because the, they are not refurbished. And you can always see the dark dark uh, bluing on there that's typical of you know a refurbished Mosin rifle the stamp numbers are there's another import stamp for you all right I guess that pretty much covers it you got to look at the crate the rifles in it a little bit better I want a slightly better camera than I used the last time and there you go that that should do it the rifle the 20 Mosin Rifle Crate 9130, Soviet Union.